Hello, fellow app sheeter. App sheetist. App sheetster. App sheet a sewer. Hey, what are you supposed to call someone that app sheets? Hello and welcome to this free app sheet bootcamp. This is a recording of a real bootcamp with real people like you who are upgrading their careers through appsheettraining.com. You're about to hear from Austin, who's going to explain how we can help you do the same. If you want to get straight to the content, skip ahead about three minutes, and you'll find me diving into how custom navigation and deep links work in AppSheet. Now let's get you building great things. Hi, everyone. My name is Austin Skidmore. I'm one of the solution architects here at Crew Technologies. Welcome to AppSheet Training's free deep link bootcamp. We are super excited to have you here with us today to learn more about deep links and AppSheet. Before we get started, we have a quick presentation about our AppSheet training services that we are excited to share with you. Our mission at AppSheet Training is to empower you to develop apps on the AppSheet platform for any use case. What we found was even no-code app development can feel intimidating. For me, I had no experience writing code to develop apps. I tried developing a few apps using AppSheet on my own and was running into some roadblocks when creating actions and automations. With the help of expert instructors here at Crew, I was able to learn how to develop an action for my specific use case. This has allowed me to bring my AppSheet app ideas to life and deploy them to help us automate our business processes. We wanted everyone to have access to this great experience in developing AppSheet apps. That's why we created appsheettraining.com, where you can also learn these essential AppSheet skills from our expert instructors. Even AppSheet agrees when talking to companies who want to embrace citizen development, AppSheet says that in-depth training is the best way to empower a citizen developer culture. Next, let's meet the crew. These are our trusted AppSheet experts, ready to help guide you through the AppSheet platform. Our instructors have a combined skill set of AppSheet development and certified teaching experience. Our students feel empowered to develop AppSheet apps after going through our courses. Read these responses from our students if you want to learn more about their great experiences. Next, let's talk about how it works. Step one is to set up your AppSheet training profile. Step two, sign up for a tech talk to find a learning path that works best for you. And step three, complete your learning path to become an AppSheet expert. If you're ready to start learning right away, we currently have five on-demand courses available. Check out the links on the slide and start learning best practices in AppSheet now. Our next learning path is designed for students who would like to learn from an AppSheet instructor. We currently have two boot camps available. Click the links to grab your seat for the next boot camp. To complete your learning experience, we recommend that you sign up for a consulting package where our expert instructors will guide you on the design of your app at various levels. Check out these services here. Now that you've seen how AppSheet Training can empower you to develop the best AppSheet apps, your next step is to click the link below and register for a tech talk with me. And we can look at your project scope and guide you on the best learning path to complete your AppSheet apps. Thanks for joining the AppSheet Training community. We look forward to guiding you on your AppSheet learning journey. All right. So today's main content is going to be custom navigation and deep links. So by default, when you create an AppSheet app, it builds in navigation for you. So you have a menu bar at the bottom and then you have a little hamburger menu at the top left that opens up a list of other menu options. When you click on a single, like a table record view, it opens the single record detail view for that record. And then there's an edit pencil and you hit that and it opens a form. All of those transitions are navigations and they're the default navigations that AppSheet provides. But what if we want to do something different? That's where custom navigation and deep links becomes relevant. So in today's session, we're going to talk about generally how apps navigate. And then we're going to talk about uh, the app that we're going to be looking at and kind of the setup there. And then we're going to actually go in and build some deep links. So I will kind of show you the app that we're going to be working with. You'll see some pictures in my slideshow. Um, but 
here's the app. It's a variation of a common sample app that AppSheet provides called the National Parks app. Okay, so I picked this because it's easily accessible, it's familiar, and we put some customized tweaks on there so that you can kind of see the expansion of the feature set. Uh, it starts with one main view. And if you're not familiar with this view type, this is called a gallery view where it just shows a picture and then uh, a name of something. And typically when you click on one of these views, it opens a detail view of a single record, but we're using a link to view deep link action to instead open another view type entirely. So I clicked on all parks and it opens up a card view of all of the parks, which there are quite a few. And if I click on one of these, it opens a detail view and you can see we've got a related notes section and a button at the top that says create note. And that opens a notes form and pre-fills the park that we were just on so that I can add a really cool note. So that you know somebody else can appreciate uh, that aspect of a park. Going back to the main menu, we also have a map. And then a view called Parks by State, which will demo at the very end that has a link to filtered view action here. So if I click Utah, it'll show me the five parks in Utah. Again, this is the all parks view, but the data is limited to only the ones related to Utah. And then this is just a view with a slice of all the ones that I've visited. So we're gonna talk about all of the deep links involved here to make this custom navigation experience possible. Okay, so zooming out a little bit, let's talk about app navigation in general. When you are navigating through a website or interacting with a web application, Nine times out of 10, you're seeing information that's specific to your visit to that website. You're not seeing the exact same content somebody else is seeing. So when you go to Google and you type something in and press enter, if somebody else is on Google at the same time, surely they're not seeing the same thing that you're seeing. You entered a custom search that you wanted to see and, app, and uh, Google's computers and servers should serve to you the specific information you requested. Okay, so that type of custom user experience uh, behavior is usually uh, communicated to the server by a specific URL and a thing called a parameter. Okay, so modern web apps use URL parameters to control which views or data to show a user at a particular time. And it usually follows some sort of pattern here. So we have the domain name of the website, a slash, and then usually a path. So like some page of that site. And then optionally, you might see what's called a query string or a list of parameters. There's uh, the specific language is not super important here, but I'm just trying to familiarize you guys with the general concept. And so what that might look like here is we go to blah.com slash app, so it pulls the app page, but then there's this question mark, which indicates to the uh, computer that you're requesting the website from, the server, that you want to see some special information. And so you pass it a parameter and a value. So what that might look like in app sheet terms and things that you might be familiar with uh, we have the base path, which is the general uh, navigation to your default starting view of your app. So this is what's bolded up here. So we have the domain name, appsheet.com slash start. And there's actually another slash. And then inside of there is your app ID. Every AppSheet app has a unique identifier. And so you can kind of see down here in the first picture, uh, the link for this particular app is appsheet.com slash start slash AA006, blah, 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 blah. So that will open this specific app. And then on the other side of that, 
is some parameters that tell the app to show something different than the default. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. So if you're curious, what's the base path to my particular app? You can go to the UX menu, or sorry, the, the users menu and the links tab, and you'll get the browser link, which will give you the sort of default starting link for your app. And when you open that, it's going to show you the starting view for your app first. So second picture down here, you see I'm in the UX menu and in the options tab. And the first option is called starting view. And the name of this one is national parks. So that's why when I open the app for the first time in this browser, it would start here on the national parks page. But what if we want to send the user to another page besides the default page? Well, that's when we start customizing the parameters that we include with the main URL. So instead of a question mark, AppSheet uses this little hash mark. That's not super important right now. But just so you know, that's kind of where all the custom stuff begins, everything right of the hash mark. And what we are putting behind that hash mark are deep link parameters. So these are things that AppSheet has specifically defined and said, okay, if you give me a certain value for the view parameter, I will go look for a view named that thing, and then I'll switch to that view for you. So uh, down here, uh, it says these parameters tell AppSheet to load specific views, data, and many other configurations options. So there's more than just the view. Um, and as a sort of a tricky thing, you see here that it says like parks percent 20 by percent 20 state. URLs can't read all of the characters that are in the normal typing alphabet uh, or, or typing characters such as spaces. And so everything in the URL bar, if you want to communicate it clearly has to be encoded. Okay. Um, if you want to read more about that, there's a little link here uh, that you can follow. That's just, you know, some for fun reading on the, excuse me, the text specifics behind encoding, but not super relevant to what we're doing. This is kind of hard, right? Uh, it's a lot to remember, a lot to think about. And AppSheet, you know, made that, uh, they said, well, you know, that we're making a no code platform. We should make it, you know, pretty easy. We want them to be able to do custom navigation, but we don't want them to have to know about parameters or URL encoding or all of these things. So we will give them deep link actions, okay? So you may have seen a few of these before. Uh, these are expressions right here um, that code for special URL parameters that go uh, that will navigate you to a different part of the app. So link to view, link to filtered view, link to form. Um, all of these will code for moving you to another view and you'll give it some specific information in between the parentheses to kind of tell it what view and maybe some other special information so that it can generate for you all of those complex URLs so you don't have to worry about it and navigate your users cleanly and reliably to that other place. So again, deep links are expressions that you can use to generate these custom navigation URLs. They're gonna move your user from one screen to another dynamically based on some event that they take or some event that they uh, trigger inside of your app. So you can't just put a deep link anywhere. Uh, deep links are expressions, but you know, you, you can only put them inside of an action. You can't put them inside of an initial value or any of the many other places where expressions can be placed in app sheet. There's, they have to be tied to an action. And an action is always triggered by some user event. This might be the press of a button. So if you remember uh, when I was demoing, creating a note, there was a button there and I clicked that button and it initiated uh, this deep link action and opened a new form when pre-filled some information. There are other types of actions that you can uh, trigger, or there are other types of events that you can trigger actions on, such as a form save, or even clicking on 
a certain view element. So in the UX menu, when you're customizing a UX view, there's a behavior section and you can actually change the behavior or the action that fires when somebody clicks or does some other type of interaction with your view. So here's a couple of examples. Uh, I mentioned the create note, right? This is a picture of my app editor when I was creating this app. You can see I'm in the behavior menu in the actions tab and I'm editing this action called create note. All right, it's saying, here's the name, create note. It lives as part of the parks table and in the do this option because app sheet actions can do lots of things. Uh, to make a deep link, you have to choose the app, go to another view within this app. That says, okay, I'm gonna you know, generate the specific behavior for that. And I'm gonna ask them for a link target after that. So you'll select, go to another view within this app and it'll say, okay, give me a target. Where am I going? And that's where you can enter your deep link expression. And I wanted this to be a button press. So I made this action display prominently and that's what made it appear as the create note button inside the detail view of my park. Now, I did something different with the uh, kind of gallery menu, right? There was no button there. When they clicked on the menu item, it then triggered the action. So this one is actually part of a UX menu behavior. So I had to first create the action in the behavior tab or the behavior menu in the actions tab. I'm building an action called go to menu view. And it's part of a table called the main menu table. So I'll show you that in a minute, but that's the data table that generates this list of menu options in my national parks view. And then I selected app, go to another view within this app, and I gave it a target. Now this time, instead of using a deep link expression, I'm just kind of showing how you can manually construct it if you want to attempt that. So I have my hash mark and view equals, and then an ampersand to say, join it to another thing. And then I use a special expression called encode URL, again, because certain things have to be encoded uh, for URLs to read it properly. And then I'm passing in the column value link from my table. So each one of these records has a link property defined in my spreadsheet, and it is taking them to a different place. Uh, and so that's why I'm, I'm putting it inside of my deep link expression there. Uh, again, I set that to display prominently, but that would only make it show in the detail view, which actually doesn't happen here. Um, instead, I've had this trigger on the UX behavior. So in my UX menu, in the views tab, I have created a view called national parks. I based it off of my main menu table. So it would show me the list of menu options. And I've set it to gallery. I made it show up in the center of the box. And at the bottom in the behavior drawer, there's a setting called the event actions. And it may list one or more event actions that uh, AppSheet allows you to interact with. So this event is called row selected. So whenever the user clicks on the row, uh, that particular record, so they click on parks or, or parks map, instead of triggering the default, which would open the detail view of that record, we are saying actually run the action we just created called go to menu view. And that's going to deep link them to some other view based on the link property of that column. So if this is going over your head, don't worry, we're gonna all do this together in real time in just a minute. Okay, so let's take a look at the link to view um, expression in action. So AppSheet gives us two options to just change what view we're looking at. So we're in one view, a user takes an action and I just wanna open any other view in my UX view options. So if I've created a new UX view and called it super awesome map, 
and I just want them to get navigated to that view, I'm going to do something like this. I'm either going to manually construct it, or I'm going to use AppSheet's helper expression, link to view, which is a lot easier. Uh, I just did it both ways so that you could see it in action. And then on the inside of it, it asks for the name of the view that we're going to go to. So the view name here. And I actually stored the name of that view in a column. And so that's why I'm referencing it here, the link column. Uh, if you just wanted to go to a static view, you could put it in quotes and just put the actual name of that view. And then we will do one other type of action today, and that is the link to form. So I showed you the notes action. This is the syntax for that expression. It doesn't just ask for a view name. Uh, it asks for the view name of particularly a form view type. And optionally, it asks for a, uh, an, a list of columns for that new table that you're opening, and then values that you want to pre-fill in the form. So you can use this to open a form view and pre-fill any number of columns or fields uh, with data from either an expression, the previous table that you were coming from, uh, or static data. So here's the example of what is uh, building this deep link to create a note. We're saying we're going to use our link to form expression. I want to open the notes form. And then I want this to be related to uh, this table actually has a column that is a ref column called park. And I want it to tie back to the park I just came from. So I'm going to say I want to prefill the park column and I want to prefill it with the park ID column from whatever row I just came from. And then there's another field called note. And uh, I don't want to leave it empty, but I want to indicate that the user should put something there. So I'm going to prefill it with this text. I'm a note. And then you can kind of see it in action there. OK, I covered a lot and talked for a while. Are there any questions, confusion? Did I kind of rush through anything? Or are you guys ready to move on to setting up your app? Can I ask a real quick dumb question? Yes. Uh, do you set up the form before this, like before you made that that link to view? Yes. So in order to do a link to view, you have to already have created a view and given it a name. So yeah, the chicken comes before the egg in that scenario. Okay. Great question. All right. Um, okay, well, let's move on to the app setup. If anybody has a question at any time, go ahead and stop me. So we're gonna walk through copying an app that is in progress, okay? So this app does not yet have the uh, custom menu set up for us. So it starts on the all parks view. And we're going to work with bringing in a new table, the main menu table, adding it in and building that gallery view and the deep link action that will allow us to navigate to um, our different view options that we have created here, all parks, map, parks by state, and parks visited. And then we're going to work on that create as well. So I'm going to copy this link and send it to everybody. sending this out in the chat. Do me a favor, go ahead and click on that and try to open it. It should open directly to the manage and author tab. It may ask you to log in app sheet if you're not already logged in.
last time we did this and people had some trouble opening the link, uh, they couldn't actually get to the app. Really not sure why that happened. Um, but if it does, just let me know and we'll try to get you access later after the session. Um, but you may just have to watch instead of build along. Okay, can somebody give me a thumbs up that they were able to open it to this page? Sweet, thank you, Terrence. Great, thank you, Kelly. Okay, getting some positive confirmation, appreciate that one. Okay, so once you're on this page, you're going to click copy app. So there's this copy app button right down here in the middle. And you're going to copy it. You might want to rename the name to something relevant to you. Uh, I'm using Google as my data source today. Uh, if you're using something else, then it will look a little bit different, uh, but it should all still function about the same. And the app is uh, asking me, do I want to make a copy of table and file data? I'm going to say yes to both of those and copy the app. What that's going to do is AppSheet is going to take all of the attributes about this app and its connected data and build new spreadsheets on my account and create a new app for me connected to that data so that we can all work on our own versions of the app and kind of have our, our takeaway um, you know, demo app for, for this session. Takes a couple of minutes to go through the process. And once you go through that, give me some thumbs up or some affirmations uh, in some capacity so I know that it's working for you. Okay, excellent, Brandon. You've got it going. Jared's got it. Kelly's got it. Excellent. Doc Brown's got it. Terrence, sweet. Okay, guys, we're rolling. This is great. Okay, so let's uh, let's start here with the info. And I want to show you a little bit about the data relationships in the app so far. So when we open the spreadsheets, you'll kind of know why I've got things set up the way I do. The only related data we have is uh, relationships is between park and notes. So we have three tables right now, park, state menu, and note. We're going to add a fourth called main menu. Um, it's not going to have any relations here, but just know that a park can have many notes. And that means that the note table has a column called park, and it stores the ID of one of these parks so that you can know that this note belongs to that park. Okay, we'll see that in action, but just wanted to give you guys a visual before we start looking at a bunch of spreadsheet data that can kind of feel intimidating sometimes. Okay, I'm going to go to the data menu and the tables tab. I'm going to click on any one of these tables and I'm going to press view source. That's going to take me right to the spreadsheet that was created for me when I did the copy app. Okay. And that loaded up for me. You'll see at the bottom, there are four tables, parks, main menu, state menu, and notes. And I have some color coding in the sheet. Every table that has a special ID or a uh, kind of an encoded ID like this, I have highlighted in green. That's the key column. And then in blue, I highlight the label. So if you have tried to relate tables together before an app sheet, you may have noticed that there is a setting here. I'm going to go to parks. You have key and label, and you can have one field be the key, and you can have two labels. One is a text type label, and one can be an image type label. And so I have both of those labeled here. And I, the only one I really highlighted was the name. 
Uh, that just means humans can recognize things by this column, but app sheet apps need to recognize it by this column that's uniquely identifying. In the main menu table, I have a very small table with four items that you may recognize, it, recognize these, parks, park map, parks by state, and visited. I have a column for the order, so I can manually rearrange these if I wanted to, so I don't have to sort alphabetically. Or I could uh, do something different than sorting alphabetically. And then I have the link, which is the name of the view that I want to take users to when they use this. And then a uh, link to the icon. My state menu is a pretty simple table. It has one column, it's a list of states. And then our notes table, because it's relational and uh, more complex, I've got my key column specified, I have my label column specified, and then in kind of orange here, I have the what's called the foreign key or the reference column highlighted as well, indicating that this contains uh, key values from another table. So if we look for 6CF, I can go over here and do a little find, and it brings me down here to row 60, whoops, 6CF138BC, Yellowstone. So we can see that this note is related back to the Yellowstone record. Okay, so all of that is just to give you context about what the app is that we have set up. We're not going to really manipulate those. We're gonna be focusing specifically on the main menu table here. Okay, so uh, David asked earlier, do you have to pre-create the view before you link to it? Yes, and if you open the app and you go to the UX menu and open the views tab, you're going to see a few views already created. All parks, map, parks visited and parks by state. And then in my sheet, I have all of those named right here in the link column. If I wanna change parks visited to parks I visited, I would have to come in here and change, change it here as well. Otherwise this link would no longer go to this view, right? It's a pretty direct relationship. All right, does anybody have any questions about the data before we bring the main menu table in and start uh, building our custom menu? Sweet, I think, I think we're good. Uh, if you do, please interrupt. If you go to the data menu and open the tables tab, you should see a suggestion for add a table for main menu. AppSheet's pretty smart. It recognized that there's another table uh, another sheet in my spreadsheet that's not being used. Maybe I, I want to use it. And so it's suggested here. I'm going to accept that suggestion by clicking on it. And then AppSheet's going to add it and automatically save the app. By doing that, uh, AppSheet by default gives me all permissions on this table. I don't want all of those. This is a menu view. Users should really just be able to see it and click on it. They don't need to add records to it. They don't need to update them or delete them. So I'm gonna change the uh, table permissions to read only. I'm gonna save that change. Okay, just because we added it, uh, really doesn't mean much happened, but the order of operations I like to follow when I add a new table is I like to, one, change the permissions, two, go to the columns tab and open it up and make sure AppSheet is reading all of my columns correctly. Okay, this is, this is a small table. Users aren't adding or updating it, so I don't really need a super stable key like in parks and notes where there's like the randomized key value, uh, the name should be good enough 
for now. So I'm going to leave that the way it is. App sheet, set it to a name type column, which is really a text column that app sheet would say, okay, that should have a higher priority when I'm making views and picking defaults or first columns or first fields that should show. And uh, sometimes it will automatically set that as a label if you make it a name. Same thing with image. It recognizes that there's a URL here. And so this is an image type and you don't have an image label already specified. So I'm gonna go ahead and specify it. Um, it grabbed that order was a number which is fine. And because we're not going to be um, like looking at the detail view of these things, I'm not gonna worry about hiding any of this yet. So all of these column settings are set and should be good to go. So if my table settings are right, my column settings are right, I wanna go ahead and make a view so that I can see it in my app. I'm going to press new view. And again, I went to the UX menu and the views tab, press new view. And I believe I named this national parks as the view name in my other app. So I'll try to keep it consistent. And it's for this data, the main menu. It happened to put that already. Great. Um, the view type I have it set to in the other app is a gallery, but you don't have to choose a gallery. Any of these would work. A deck view would work. Um, any of the multi-record views that aren't calendar. So table view, gallery, or card view. Um, I, I think gallery usually is most appropriate for the main menu or like custom center menus. So I'm gonna leave it as a gallery. Um, I think I'm going to make it small image sizes so that we can all see it on the same uh, screen. And I want to change the sort. You know, I gave it that custom column to sort by. So I want to make sure it obeys that. And let's change the icon. Do we got trees? Trees. I like that one. Okay, great. I'm going to save that. Give it a little test. That's looking good, just like my other app. If I click this, whoa, okay. It doesn't open up the all parks view it opens up the detail view for that record. It shows me its name, order, and the link. And of course the image here, which is nice, but uh, it's not what I want it to do. I want it to open a different view. So somebody help me out. Where, where's my next step? Going to the behavior section and edit the event action. Okay. No, of the view, the behavior of the view, I think. Okay. And behavior. So it's only giving me this option right now, auto. So what that means is there are no other actions created for this row that could be put here or for this table. So we need to go make one. Let's go to the behavior menu and we can see there are actions for notes, parks, and state menu, uh, but not the main menu. So we're gonna press a new action. And this is the, we want them to go to a different view when I click here. So I'm just gonna call this go to menu view. And I don't want this on the parks table. I want this on the main menu table. So I want it to be interacting with this table primarily. And it asks me, what do I want to do? Again, if I click this, I get a ton of options. The ones that work for, uh, that utilize deep links are go to another app sheet app and go to another view within this app. Okay, I'm going to click that one. 
And now it's asking me for my deep link target. Um, I'm just going to save this for now and see if we don't get an error here. Uh, it says we have an error, but it is a weird error. It's saying I'm not going to a column or I'm not setting a column, but I don't want to set a column. Uh, all right, so somebody help me out here. What am I going to be putting for this? Navigation target. I'll help you out. It starts here in this deep links section of the expression editor. This is a list of uh, common patterns for writing them directly or how to use and uh, how to use the different types of deep link options. We have quite a few options available to us. Um, any idea which one of these I should choose right now? Link to view. You got it. Link to view. Now, uh, if you see on the pattern on the left, it says link to view. The first uh, parameter that's going in here is called view name. But there's a second one and it has square brackets around it. Okay, that doesn't mean it's a column name. Uh, that means in, in terms of like their... Um, pattern syntax, it means that this is optional, as in you don't have to include this parameter if you don't want to. You could just put a view name. Uh, so an optional app ID, meaning I could actually link them to a, another view in a different app entirely. I would just put the app ID for that one uh, there. So, whoops, didn't mean to click that. So I'm just going to click the insert there and it's going to give me the default pattern. Uh, I don't want to go to a different app, so I'm going to delete the second parameter. And what's going here in my apps? It's, I mean, I don't want to navigate to a view called my apps. I want to go to a different one based on what row I'm in. Thoughts? To the column, uh, link to the column that has the uh, few names. That's right. So if I go to my columns list here, it'll show me the list of all my columns. And I have access to the link column right here. So this action is firing on a single record of the main menu table, meaning I can pull values from that. Uh, whatever row this action was initiated on, and I can use it in this expression. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm referencing the column, so I have to put it in square brackets. And it's uh, link, not links. Great. I'm going to save that. Hopefully, AppSheet doesn't yell at me. Okay, great. Uh, if I click on it, it doesn't take me to a different view, but it does show me there's a button here now. And if I click on that button, it does take me to the other view. So we know the action is working. We just want to trigger it on a different event. Okay, so by default, because this uh, action is set as a display prominent, action, it's going to show up as a button in the detail view. That's fine, but I want it to trigger instead on the behavior of the UX view. Now, uh, I, th I think it was Terrence earlier who mentioned that we can go to the UX menu, views tab, and go down to the behavior section. And before we, uh, on the row selection event, we couldn't change the action. But now there are two options, auto, which goes to the detail view, or go to menu view. Let's bind that action to this event. Give it a test. Oh, yeah, that is what I want to see. Excellent.
All right, so custom menu, done, mission accomplished. Let's uh, move this other all parks view out to the side menu. All parks is now on the side menu. So I just changed its position here. And I want the app now to open to the national parks view by default. So I'm gonna go to UX and options and I'm gonna change the starting view to national parks. And I'm gonna save that. So we have a new home view for our app and it is navigating to whatever view we put in the links or the link column for that table. Excellent, custom menu accomplished. Let's look at the next, uh, next action that we wanna do. So link to form is a really powerful deep link action. And the first and most obvious place to use it is with related tables. So uh, I'm gonna click into Zion National Park here. And again, I'll remind you that in the notes table, we have a park column. It's of type ref. It is referencing the parks table as its source. And when we do that, AppSheet makes a virtual column for us in that parent table or the parks table. Down at the bottom, I end up with this blue pencil column. It's a virtual column, meaning it doesn't exist in my spreadsheet, but AppSheet uh, shows it in the app. And it has this fancy ref rows expression, which we're not going to worry about, but it, it's basically a list of all the notes that are related to this park. Okay. So, hey, um, Stephen? Yep. Uh, could, you, could you show how, oh, sorry. Uh, could you show how to make the uh, button go away? Sorry for better words. Yeah, yeah. So um, in this particular example, it no longer goes to the detail view mm -hmm. of that park. So I didn't necessarily make the button go away, but I changed what was triggering the action. So we have our action main menu, or go to menu view, sorry. And uh, its appearance right now is display prominently that makes it show up as a button. I can make it do not display and the button would go away, but I still wouldn't get the navigation behavior that I wanted. So what I did is I went to the UX menu. Uh, earlier in the slides, we said that every deep link action has to be triggered by an event. Right. So that button press is an event, but it's not the only event. In the UX menu in a view, you have the behavior section down here, which is uh, exposes an event called row selected. Gotcha. So when a row is selected, do this thing. And the thing we wanna change it to, it's auto by default, but we wanna change it to go to menu view. So that's what triggers that deep link action now. Gotcha. Yeah. Very helpful, thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, so we have our related data tables here. Uh, Parks has a virtual column, which is a list of all related notes. So if I came down here to Yellowstone, you would see down at the bottom related notes. And it shows me a list of notes from the notes table that are related back to this particular park. Okay, and part of that default behavior is that AppSheet gives us this add button at the bottom of that, uh, this is called an inline list, just as far as definitions are concerned, um, related notes, this inline list of notes at the bottom of it, I have view and add. If I click view, it opens up a full page view of this list of notes. And if I click add, it opens a form and AppSheet's intelligent and it says, hey, you clicked add on a particular park and this ad is supposed to create a new note. Well, you probably want it related to that particular park, which is great. That's really impressive. Um, but this little ad thing down here is not intuitive for a user. If you want them to create a note, 
you would be expecting them to go down here and see ad and, and know that that's the place they have to go to create one of these things, which is kind of a lot. I would rather it be up at the top. So as soon as they come to the view, they're prompted to make a note and have a button that indicates, hey, if I press here, it's going to create a note for me. So how do we reproduce that cool behavior that this add button did by pre-filling the park? Okay, I'm going to quickly create a new action. This action is going to be on the parks table. I'm going to call it create note. I'm going to set it to go to another view within this app. It asks me for a link target. I know I need to go to some view. So I'm going to go to my UX menu and look down the list of views. I want to open something in the notes table. It has to be a form view. Well, AppSheet has this, this default view called notes underscore form. If you're not seeing that, if you scroll down to the very bottom, it should show like a button here that says show system views. You can click that and you'll see these uh, lighter UX controllers. So notes form is the name of the thing I want to navigate to. So if I used the expression from our previous example, link to view, and I want to go directly to the notes form, uh, let's give it a nice icon. Uh, text, Ooh, text bubble, I like it. We're gonna make that show up as a prominent button. I'm gonna save it. I, I guess it's saved. I don't know, my screen's getting weird. Okay, it's coming back now. Okay, National Parks, Parks, Yellowstone. Hey, we have our button. If I click it, it opens a new view and it's a notes form. But the problem is it's not relating back to the park I came from. So I have to like click through this massive list of parks to find Yellowstone and fill it out. Not optimal, right? We want better for our users. So I'm going to use a different action type to initiate and, and uh, initiate this view transition and pre-fill some values. Does anybody remember the name of that action? Or the name of that uh, deep link expression? Link to, link to form. You got it, Jared. Link to form. So down in my deep link options, I'm going to go look at link to form and it has quite a mouthful for its pattern here. So let's uh, talk through all of the parameters inside of this expression. The first one is the form view name. Okay. So it's not just a view name, like link to view. It has to be a form view name, which we already have. We have notes form. Great. There's a comma. And then the next thing is in square brackets. So we know it's optional. And then it ends up having an ellipses in here as well. That means you can repeat this pattern indefinitely. And it is column name one, comma, column value one, comma, column name two, comma, column value two. That means what's the name of the column in the, in the view we're going to or form we're going to? And then what are you going to fill that value with? Do you want to specify another column that you want to pre-fill? Okay, what value there? And then another optional parameter is an app ID, meaning you can actually navigate to a form in another app and pre-fill it with data from the app you just came from, which is kind of cool. We're not going to do that in this one, but we will build out this link to form expression. So I'm going to insert this. And AppSheet gives me some random column names and value names. 
not going to use those. Let's set the form view, notes, underscore form. And the columns I want to pre-fill, if I go look at my list of columns in the notes table, the note ID is filled automatically. There's an initial value expression on that that generates this unique ID. I have to put some park ID in column B in the park column to relate it back. So that's step one. And then again, I want to pre-fill note with something else, just a random message to indicate that the user should fill it out. Now, a little side note here, the name of the column has to be the way it's named in the destination form. So we initiate this action in the parks table, but it's going to another form view that is of the notes table. So any column pre-filling that I'm going to do, I have to name them according to what they're named in the destination table. So I'm gonna name this parks. But when I do a column reference, cause I wanna fill this with the park ID, I have to treat it relative to the table I'm initiating the action from. So this one's called park ID here. So that's the value I wanna pre-fill into the park column in the notes table. It's a dynamic value from a column of this row. So that's why I put the square brackets around it. I don't put square brackets around parks because I'm not, I don't want that to be dynamic. I want it to be static. I want it to be the column named parks, but the value that goes in it, I want to be dynamically chosen. I want it to be whatever the park ID is for this rows park. And then let's just not worry about this second one for now. I'm going to save it. Okay, so we click create note. Oh, something's happening here. Can anybody tell me why this isn't pre-filling? We made a link to form. We put all the stuff in there. It's code pox, should be code pox. Excellent catch. If we look here, the column specification is parks, but the column here is park. Darren, you got that in the chat too. I see you, you're sharp. Okay, you guys have eagle eyes. I miss stuff like this all the time. And then I start pulling my hair out because I'm like, why isn't this working? Surely AppSheet's broken. This is a bug. And I start writing the bug to support at AppSheet.com. And then I go to like test it one more time. And I'm like, oh, I spelled it wrong. So embarrassing. Usually I actually like send this, the bug report first. And then I test it again and find out that I spelled it wrong. Embarrassing. Okay, let's change that and see if it works. I want to start over from the beginning here. Yellowstone, create note. Hey, we are pre-filling it. Let's fill that out and save it. I'm going to push the sync through. Uh, and for those new to AppSheet and new to relational database tables, in the data table, it stores the ID but because that column is a ref column in AppSheet, it doesn't show that ID to the user anymore. It shows the labels, which can be in one image and one text. So that's why we see the image of Yellowstone and the text Yellowstone for all of these options instead of their IDs, even though what we save in the sheet is the ID. So very important tidbit there for relational database stuff. 
that can be really confusing. We cover a lot of that in our app sheet proficiency bootcamp, uh, how to normalize, or how, to, how to structure your data to be related to each other um, instead of being one big giant table or repeating data unnecessarily. We, tell, we teach you how to break it apart and use stable keys or IDs um, and then the difference between keys and labels, how to build the ref columns, associate them to the right tables and get this awesome uh, related data effect in your apps. Okay, so somebody help me out here. I wanna pre-fill the notes column with the text, this is the best note ever. Actually, tell you what, I think it'd be more fun if we fill it with the park ID again. So somebody help me out here. What's next? I wanna pre-fill the notes column. Just put the column in again. After a comma. Yep. Let's uh, let's try it this way. Chat me what the expression should look like. So write it yourself and chat it to me, and we'll try a few of them out and see see if one of them works. one thing saying it's a whole nother thing writing it and then you have to worry about oh is there a space there the comma no comma it can be tricky and again the goal here is i like what i have for this part but i also want to fill out the note column and i want to fill it with uh, for fun, I want to fill it again with the park ID, but I want it to actually show the ID value. All right, they are starting to flow in. These are looking good. Very nice. Okay, so I'm gonna take a couple of these and just use them as examples just to kind of show how small changes uh, affect the behavior. So, oops, that was the wrong deal. I wanna copy this, copy, paste. Okay, so this is one of them. We added a comma, we added another name of a column and another value of a column. What this is going to do is when I press the create note button, it's going to pre-fill the note column with the exact text park, which is kind of how I, I did it in the uh, initial demo and, and the completed app. Um, so that's a great example of how to fill it with what I call static text as in it's not data-driven uh, or dynamic. And then we have uh, other examples where we have the park ID in square brackets. And let's see what the behavior does here. Discard this one, come back in. We'll look at Zion now. Create a note. One, two, one, 
1688C. Very cool. Let's look at a different park, Yosemite. So now it fills it with Yosemite's ID. So it's different between each park I click on. So again, square brackets make it dynamic and different for every row. In quotes, makes it static and the same for every row we apply it to. So great. Love what I'm seeing. You guys are grabbing hold of this. So that is uh, all of the interactive examples we're going through today. The app has a bonus link to uh, expression. And it is this one in Parks by State where we filter a view while we navigate to it. So I don't have a slice, which is normally how you, one would filter data. You can make slices of whole tables. I have two slices, parks not visited and parks visited, where the condition is the visited column doesn't equal to do, or the visited column equals to do. I want to filter, I mean, if I wanted to do it that way, I would have to make a new slice for every state park, which would end me up with like 70 slices in my app. And that would be not efficient. So an easier way to do that is to use a link to filtered view expression. So in the state, in the behavior menu, in the actions tab, there is an action called see parks in this state. And it is a deep link expression or deep link action. And I use link to filtered view, which takes me to any view. Now this view has to be a collection view or a, uh, a group view. So a table, a deck, a gallery, a map, or a card view, anything that shows, or maybe, maybe a calendar view that shows multiple records at one time. So forums and detail views don't show more than one record at a time. So this is irrelevant to those. And then the second parameter is a filter condition. So this is like the condition in a slice. Basically show me all the parks and then run this expression on every park in that list. Or so show me the all parks table, or excuse me, all parks view, which is connected to the parks table. Run this expression on every row in the parks table and each one that passes this expression where this results to true, include that in the view, otherwise exclude it from this view. So where the state column is equal to the state column from the row we just clicked on. And why we have to use this row, we explain more in our Expression Mastery Bootcamp. Uh, and we talk about context, about where data is relative to uh, when you put square brackets around it. So how does it know what table and what row I'm referring to when I put square brackets around something? So that's a little bonus for you guys. Um, if that's kind of blowing your mind or something you want to learn more about, the Expression Mastery Bootcamp would be helpful for you there. Um, guys, I want to thank everyone for attending. Again, we'd love to see you. Check out some of our on-demand boot camps or on-demand videos, join a live boot camp or uh, engage with us for consulting. We want to come behind you and help you unlock all the power of AppSheet. Thanks guys.